Welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes and I'm so glad you're with us today. It is essential that we never forget that our minds are extremely powerful. This amazing, legendary power of our minds is behind so many things. The power of prayer, the new age idea of the power of the secret. Quite literally, whatever you affirm with certainty is likely to come true in some way, which is why praying in affirmations is so immensely powerful. I'm going to give you an example. In 2009, I gave the rest of my life to God. I now know, of course, that it was my guide Thomas nagging me to do it. I had spent most of my life, as you know, during afterlife research and figuring out what's going on, and it was time for me to start working to spread the word. So I made the gift of the rest of my life to God by saying an affirmation that I have now said every day for the past 12 years and counting. (laughs) I said, thank you for giving me work to do. Thank you for showing me how to do it. Two simple, simple affirmations. And of course, I always further empower my affirmations with gratitude. That's very important. We'll talk about that. In my case, those two affirmations have worked out amazingly well. Within three months, I was writing The Fun of Dying out of the blue, didn't even plan to write a book. And I have been guided in doing this glorious work ever since. Always guided to do it on God's terms, not on my own. So our own minds are capable of infinite power, and using affirmations is the most effective way to awaken and use our minds effectively. Now I feel really remiss that we haven't much talked on Seek Reality about the immense power that your own individual mind has over your own life. So today our guest is our wonderful resident expert on consciousness and the power of consciousness, Dr. R. Craig Hogan. This is Craig's amazing 29th Seek Reality visit. And he is such an expert on so many things, every aspect of the study of the greater reality, that each of those 29 visits has shared with us a different topic, amazingly. Craig is a legend in the field of afterlife research and education. He's been instrumental in moving many things forward, has run some important afterlife conferences, has spoken at many key venues, and has been wonderfully supportive of long-term efforts at research on cutting-edge mediumship, including physical mediumship and also electronic communication with those that we used to think were dead. In short, Craig Hogan is one of the primary people in this whole field worldwide. Craig, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome, welcome. No, thank you. I'm glad to be here. We have such a good time when we get on together. We always do have fun, don't we? Yeah, we have fun. We we usually begin having you talk a little about your history, but I think after 28 visits, probably most people are familiar with the fact that this work sort of took you over uh, relatively late in your life. And you have now, as I say, you really have, are, I think, the leading person in this whole field. But let's talk instead today about uh, the Afterlife Research and Education Institute. I get its emails. I know you're working. And... What are you up to now? But incidentally, the Afterlife Research and Education Institute is AREI to those who know and love it. And its, its website is afterlifeinstitute.org. So what we're doing now is we're focusing upon physical mediumship and instrumental transcommunication primarily. And we are finding physical mediums and finding circles that we can promote and we can help in their developments. Our own circle is the AREI Circle of the Masters of Light, and uh, we just decided that we were going to form a circle in the middle of the cornfields in Illinois, and we wanted to see whether they would honor it on the other side and they would do something with it. And after we sat for about seven years, then things started to happen. And, uh, yeah, we uh, we were patient, and they were patient with us. Yeah. And it does take time. It takes time to have a circle. So then we sat for the, that period of time, and now 
things are happening every every circle meeting that we have. Our table is rocking and moving across the room as we're as we're trying to keep up with it with our fingers on the table, and uh, they are sending messages to us, wonderful, enlightening messages. So it's just a wonderful experience. And then in, in instrumental trans communication, we're working with Hans Otto Koenig, we're working with Sherry Pearl and Sonia Rinaldi, and they're just doing groundwork groundbreaking work. And so we are working with them and supporting them in any way that we can and just enjoying it ourselves because it's such an exciting field. Things are being are coming to us every day. So we're learning things from the other side. They are really pumping the information into us. And so that's what we're focused on right now. Wow, that's wonderful. But I, I people wondered, I'm sure, what physical mediumship is that it took you – You this was every – once a week, right? For seven yep. years, you yep. all uh, patiently sat in the darkness and sang mm-hmm. songs, and mm-hmm. then things started to happen finally. Do we know why it takes – because I know it always takes a long time to get going. What, do we know why that is? No, we're not entirely sure why it is. We do know that everything that we do in this work with those who are living in the life after this life is a relationship. So what we're doing is uh, we're not really going to be able to develop phone lines. So we can't have an AT&T that's going to get to the uh, oh, those living in the life after this life. Yeah, right. We're looking forward to that. Who's going to buy one of those? Huh? Oh, and uh, it's just not going to happen. And the reason it's not going to happen is because it isn't uh, electronic in that sense. It's a relationship. And when Sonia started doing her ITC work, uh, instrumental transcommunication work, she spent two years just developing her relationship. And now she has a very strong relationship with the stations that are on the other side. And in physical mediumship, it can take uh, seven years, ten years. Some circles start off and very quickly come into something. And that one of the reasons is they have a medium called a physical medium. And that medium is born that way. They have that talent, that inborn talent. And they're able to sit in a group and immediately things start to happen. But for most of us, it takes years. It'll take five years, seven years, ten years. And we didn't even know when it was going to happen. We, what we do is we play rock music because we all love it, and we right. sing our hearts out. It's just wonderful and sitting in the dark. And we just one evening were playing our rock songs, and in the middle of one of the songs, the table started shaking. And uh, <laughs> wow. so, yeah, so we knew that uh, that that was a song that they liked, and so we had other songs similar to it. And and the song, the table then graduated from there to the point where it rocks up and down one side of the table, almost vertical, and uh, then moves across the room. But we had to to establish the relationship. The relationship in all of this work is extremely important. So you won't get – researchers who are not establishing a relationship are not going to get good results because this is something which is done between people and between entities. It's from me to you, from, from us to those on the other side. And the more we can establish those relationships, the more we're going to get results. Wow. I mean, this is really mega what you're doing. Um, just to explain this further, everyone, um, the great, great – heyday of afterlife communication, latter part of the 19th, early part of the 20th century, happened because there were many people who would sit in the dark, and it became a fad. They would sit in the dark and try to do table tipping, and and they developed their mediums that way. So this is a very productive thing, That, but you have the patience of Job if you are able to do this every weekend for so long. Good for yeah, you. Yeah, and we had confidence. We, it was because of our confidence in, in those who are working with us, the teams. We actually have a whole team that works with us on the other side. So we had the confidence in them, and that's what enabled us to sit for that period of time. And we can, we believe any circle can do it. So people could form circles anywhere, and they'll get the same results. And we're just at the beginning of what's going to be happening in the circle. We expect, fully expect to have materializations as we develop, and that means that people are going to materialize in the room and speak. And so we fully know they've told us it's going to happen. So now we're being patient with that, and we're waiting for that to happen. Anybody can do it. We'd just like to encourage people to start their own circles. We would help them. If someone, so that, I was going to ask you that question. If someone is listening and saying, wow, I want to try that, is this something that you will help them start and sort of be Absolutely. their advisor? Absolutely. Oh, my goodness, yeah. that's great. So, yeah, and we would do that personally, coaching them. 
So, and and if uh, and they wanted to, their circle can uh, can come in to a Zoom group with our circle, and we can talk to them about what they're doing and meet with oh, them. My so we are really going to shepherd people along if they want to start their own circle. Good for you. Wow, that is mm-hmm. wonderful. That's big news. I'm so glad mm-hmm. it's working so well. Yeah, yeah, it's working. So what we, I, I think the, there, it's also important to just mention your books because you've been extremely prolific over the past year in writing and publishing. Um, the, the one that, that I guess that I'm, I'm sort of I'm fondest of because it's the way I met you, um, your eternal self is now 12 years old. That is, or thereabouts, almost 13. That is, I think, the definitive book on the physics of the afterlife and the greater reality and how it all fits together. I loved that book, Your Eternal Self, and he he made a good thing better. He has now put out, just published, I guess, last year, latter part of the year, Your Eternal Self, Science Discovers the Afterlife, which is updated and and with new information, right? Right. Tell us about that. Yeah, there's new information in it, but the most important thing is we we have linked it to videos. So each one of the explanations that we have in the book is linked to a YouTube video, and we have the links there so that people can get on and they can get more information. They can get deeper information from people who really are leaders in the field. And so it isn't just the information in the book. It's like it's a whole course of study if they wanted to go into it and, and watch these experts talking about yeah. what's in the book. So that's uh, that's the major change in the book. Wow, that's that's very exciting. But at the, even even before it came alive that way, this was a terrific book. Everybody who is interested in understanding what really is going on must read that book. And of course, the the book that's most pertinent to our topic today is it, "There Is Nothing But Mind and Experiences." Think about that, everyone. There is nothing but mind and experiences. And we we talked about this last fall. Um, I read the book. I think it's boggling and brilliant um talk about that a little bit yeah there is the the idea that there is a physical universe that is out there and it's spinning away and uh, it exists all by itself has nothing to do with humankind and humankind is an accident in time uh, that we're soft rocks we just evolved out of rocks and all of that now has been proven not to be true, that, that's incompatible with quantum mechanics, which tells us that the universe is not like that. And uh, as a result of that, then we're finding out that when we go further, even further than quantum mechanics, we realize that we are creating this reality, we're creating this universe together, and we do that by our expectations. And we get that so- our source is the universal intelligence that is the ground of all being. And we are in this together, rather like we were in a dream together. And in the same yes. way in a dream, you create your own characters and you create the events and, and you have the feeling like it's all really real. Uh, in the same way, we are creating the reality, reality that we're in now. And there is no physical universe out there. There's no need to have one. We can have the experiences without it. So there is nothing but mind, our minds and the universal intelligence and the experiences that we're having is our minds. Wow. And there is so much in that book that basically supports this that I, I'm with you. I agree. But I think it's a little amazing to – because this is such a great illusion. And actually, you know who else said that? Albert Einstein said that, that, that mm-hmm. what is around us is, is, is just an illusion – albeit a very persistent one, he said. Mm -hmm. And that's an excellent point. It does sure try to fool us that it's real, doesn't it? Yeah, sure. But we also believe that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. We believe that that was true. We believe that we were the center of the universe. And there are many beliefs that we had that are now falling away as we mature as as a species. And one of these is the idea that there is a physical universe that is independent of us. This universe is made for us. It's a personal universe. We are here because of the fact that we are learning lessons, we're loving one another, and we're enjoying the experience. And so this universe that, that we call Earth School is made for us. And it isn't, it's the Goldilocks universe. It's the ideal universe that we'd want to have. And the reason for that is because the universal intelligence has allowed us 
to have this universe. And as we got used to it, as we grew into it, we each grew up in the universe, we developed our own expectations for the way that it should be. And so then we are supporting it. Any changes that we make, we can make changes in this world, in this earth school. And those changes then will be passed along to everyone else through the universal intellect. And then we are participants in both the creation of the universe and in making the, the events happen. This is so amazing and so boggling. And what's this comes to the book that you are that are about to publish, which is what everybody needs to know. Because the reason, you know, everyone is saying, you know, what do you mean we created this? This is this world is screwed up. If anything has ever been screwed up, and I, I think I have to agree, you've got a point there. But the problem is that we don't understand who and what we actually are. We are inter- eternal beings. We can't die. It's not possible. And we are actually nothing but pure love. We are distracted from that for a time. But we are all love. That's all we are. And the reason we don't know this stuff is that we don't understand that we are eternal. I think that's the most important thing for everybody listening to learn and learn quickly, that we are eternal. There is no death. Not only is there an afterlife, it's our real life. And there's a new book coming out from Craig, which is going to help with that. It's called What Really Happens Before, During, and After This Life, Answers from Speakers Living in the Afterlife. Wow. So we we, we get to hear the news and the truth about the fact that we are these beautiful immortal beings from the people who would know because they're already there. Yeah, Talk about so that. it has yeah, all the sources are from the the afterlife or from science. Some of the things are from science, but most of them are from the speakers in the afterlife. And we have the information now. Uh, one of the reasons we have it now and we didn't have it before is because we have mass communication that we didn't have. Yes, and so things true. Are, people are able to compare notes and we have these things happening and they get spread around and, and so now we have volumes of these testimonies from the people who are living in the life after this life and they're anxious to come back they have as part of their mission to help humankind to evolve out of this um, scientific the old uh, idea that there is a physical universe Mm -hmm. and that we are good we die when the body dies and to grow out of that into the realization of what we really know to be true now that the time when we have a transition from earth school it's just another transition, just like going from childhood to, into adulthood. And it is the easiest possible thing. Easiest as possible. Mm-hmm. The, the, what's very important for everyone to understand is that when we are ignorant of the fact that we are eternal, we are fear-based in our very nature. That's why when, uh, we, most religions are absolutely poison because they are based in fear. They make you fear you're a good person. God fear in man, you fear God. Well, if you fear God, you cannot love God. And you are stuck at the lowest level of vibration of your own consciousness. When you stop fearing God and we and stop fearing death, please believe me on this, you will never again fear anything. Not the mortgage payment, not driving a car, not not the weather, not the politics, nothing. Nothing will make you afraid because you will know that you are eternal. Nothing can touch you. And that's why it's so important that we really focus on helping everybody understand that we truly are immortal, eternal beings. We are, by our definition, uh, we, we cannot die and our minds are eternal. I mean, what could be better news than that? And so what Craig is doing actually is much more even than I can do. He is coming up with all the reasons to convince everybody that they are eternal. And that's when the world really will change. If you want to save the world, that's the way we do it. So today we're going to talk about the power of our minds to actually create the reality that we see around us. And this is, I just have to give you a caveat. This is a completely non-religious subject. It's based entirely in scientific fact, as much as any topic ever could be based in scientific fact. But some of the prophets of the world's leading religions have talked about the creative powers of our minds, and that includes Jesus. 
Part of my role, Thomas has made me know, is to help people who have fallen away from Christianity to find the truth that Jesus taught us 2,000 years ago. And this is a very important thing that Jesus says in the Gospels about the creative power of our minds. He says, truly I say to you, and you'll, re- you'll recognize this when you hear it, truly I say to you, whenever, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says is going to happen, it will be granted to him therefore i say to you all things for which you pray and ask believe that you have received them and they will be granted to you that's mark 11 22 to 24 right from the gospels right from the mouth of the lord he tells us what craig is telling us what we're talking about today which is that your mind is immensely powerful he says believe if you just know that's the same thing he's not talking about believing in god he's talking about believing in the power of your own mind he knew that 2000 years ago and here's someone else the buddha said we are what we think all that we are arises from our thoughts with our thoughts we make the world so Craig, yeah, let's today yeah, yeah, let, let's, let's talk about your understanding of consciousness or mind as the base mm-hmm. creative force because that's a, that's really going to be, I think, more our view. Those are thousands of years old. Those words, truer, true, truer words were never spoken. But how do you look at it today? Yeah, and today we know the fact that the consciousness is creating reality because there are things that happen that, based upon our consciousness that show that we are the participants. We are the progenitors of what happens. Uh, for instance, there's a. Uh, if you know anything about uh, the biology of belief, which is uh, uh, by Bruce Lipton, uh, uh-huh. he's a cell biologist, and what he has discovered is that the programming that we have, that we develop in the first seven years of life, creates scripts in our minds, and then based upon those scripts, they, they are what influences the cells in our body, not the DNA. And it's, it's called epigenetics, meaning epi meaning outside, so the genetics is outside of us and outside of the body and so the epigenetics what we believe what we what we think is true that is affecting the body that's making the body either healthy or making it ill Uh, in fact there's a placebo effect in which if you believe something to be true then you will become uh, well you will become positive you'll become happy uh, and there's also a nocebo effect. And nocebo is if you believe things to be awful, to be bad, that you have yes. cancer, then what will happen is that will become your reality. And in fact, you will get it. Uh, there's one story that uh, about, say, a, a man who had uh, a malignant cancer that was uh, going to be terminal within a few days. And he heard about a, a new formula that they were giving to the people that had this cancer, and it was called Cribizone. And that uh, if he would take the Cribizone, he might be healed. And so he he entreated his physician to give him the Cribizone. And the, the physician said, and thought, "Well, this guy is terminal. There's no help, help that can, that, no hope for him." And he gave him the Cribizone anyway. And the man, within a couple of days, all of his tumors entirely oh, throughout his body disappeared. What? Wow. And it's because of his belief that he had no longer had cancer. But then he read a research study, this man who had the cancer, read a research study that said the cribiazone is worthless. Oh, no. Within two or three oh, no. days, all of the tumors came oh. back. And he was on his deathbed, and, and the, the physician realized that there was something strange going on here. And so the physician <laughs> said to him, well, uh, I'll tell you what, I've got a super strong version of Crepuzone, and I'm going to give that to you. Actually, it was sugar water, but he knew that this was having a placebo effect. So he gave them, him the sugar water, and within a couple of days, the tumors had all gone around again, and he was completely cancer-free. And then he read something from the AMA that said, well, Cribiazone is worthless. No, there's nothing to Cribiazone. He had a relapse, and, and within three days, he died. Oh, that's a terrible story. The poor uh, yeah, man. Yeah, but what we do that, if we, what we expect to happen with our bodies, what we expect to happen in our lives, the scripts that we're given in those first seven years are going to determine what happens for us. So right. it isn't just happenstance. It isn't just that we are victims of the environment. We are the ones who are creating what is happening with us and with our bodies. There are other examples of the same thing. Wow, that is really the poor man. Mm-hmm. 
they should never have let him read anything. He would have still be alive today. What That's right. an amazing yeah. story. Yeah. Um, I, I, Bruce Lipton is, I think, a wonderful um, uh, worker in this field, laborer in this mm-hmm. field, because he is. And I've, I've had him as a guest on Seek Reality. He's just he bounces off the walls. He's just so he does. He enthusiastic does. <laughs> about everything. But mm-hmm. it's all right. I mean, this epigenetic, sort of, which which means just above the genes, control mm-hmm. is very important. And you know, there was someone at the time when Darwin was so successful. Everybody just loved him in the 19th century. He's just oh, he was it, and he knew everything. Well, he was wrong, and there was somebody else who was into ep- the epigenetic situation and the fact that 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 affects our lives. It's an ongoing process. His name was Lamarck. And he was right, and he died penniless just because everyone thought, oh, no, Darwin knows everything. And to this day, scientists love Darwin, and more and more it's becoming obvious that he just understood a little part of what is a very complex situation. And epigenetic factors are very important to all of us. So thank you for letting me talk about Lamarck again. I, I, I'll, Lamarck was right. I try to say that at least once or twice a week. The poor man, he was mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that is true, and we're finding out that, that more and more that that's true. And another story, the um, the it was in the American Journal of Psychiatry. Uh, they had a combat veteran who was put into a hypnotic trance, and he was told that he was back in combat. A shell had exploded, and it dropped a small particle of molten shell fragment on his hand. So when he came out of the trance, he started complaining of a pain in his hand, as oh. though he had a cigarette burn. Four hours later, there was a full blister. Oh, one centimeter could... in diameter that had appeared on his hand, oh. and so then uh, he he had done that through his beliefs. His beliefs had had um, had caused that to happen. Then on the, the day after that, the burn had healed, he was again taken into a hypnotic trance, and he was told that his right hand was perfectly normal, but his left hand was anesthetized <laughs> and drained of blood. And when he was brought out of the hypnotic trance, the finger on his right hand was pricked, and, of course, he responded, and it bled. And the finger on his left hand was pricked. He felt nothing, and no blood emerged from the wound. So it's based entirely on his beliefs, entirely upon what it is that he believed about his body. He was controlling his body. And we do that all the time. We just don't realize it. We just don't. Oh, my goodness. That is so amazing. Mm -hmm. So... You, you, what is your understanding of the the basic principle that consciousness or mind is the base creative force? It's it's individual minds, but it's also a, a core mind, right? Well, how, tell me how you understand it, because it's probably different from the way I do. Sure, sure. Uh, there is a universal intellect. There is nothing, as Ahmed Goswami, the nuclear physicist, said, there is nothing but God. That was his conclusion yes. uh, for everything. Uh, yes. So there is nothing but the universal intellect. Everything we see, everything that we are, everything that, that we think, all of it's coming out of the universal intellect. We are individuated units of it. We're simply manifestations of it. We've chosen to take on these roles as being limited, limited by Earth school, so that we could have uh, the circumstances in which we can learn lessons, we can love one another, and we can enjoy the experience. So it is all the universal intellect, and then there are higher selves within the universal intellect, and they are collections of of individuals. And then for each one of us as individuals, we have a soul. The soul is kind of the link between the higher self and us. And the soul knows what's going on. It, It is clued in on what our plan was for our life that we had put together, where we're going, what's going on now. And the soul then will, as necessary, will make changes within our lives in order to make things happen, uh, but only in guiding us so that we can go on with our lives and, and we can learn the lessons that we're here to learn. So then we then are the individual stations of it, of this universal intellect. And we grow up in earth school. We learn other things that we need to learn. We, as we go through the experiences in earth school we developed our personalities and then at some point then we're able to grow spiritually we're able to grow into who the person is that we want to be uh, but that is still us as manifestations of the universal intellect through the soul and the, and the higher self and all of it is the universal intellect wow okay i i, I substantially agree with you in that but now 
there are people who are listening who are saying, I would never have made this you know, complicated life I have. I, you know, I'm in my second marriage. This isn't going well either. One of my kids has this or that problem and my job isn't going well. And I would never have created, created this for myself. My mind didn't do this. How would we talk about that? Yeah. Well, we do make those choices, but we make those choices from a different perspective. So we made those choices before we were born, before we came into earth school, this time that we have here and we planned it. Uh, we planned it with our souls our, our, and, the, and with the higher self and our guides. And we made the plans from the perspective that we saw, which was that we're going to be here for, oh, I don't know, five or ten minutes in time. It seems right. like Nothing. very right. short. Life is very short. And so during this time, we're going to take on these challenges. We're going to have these things happen. We're going to have the grief. We're going to have the tragedies. We're also going to have successes and wonderful times and, and loving people. And we made the plans based upon what it is that we wanted to learn in this lifetime and, and the experiences we wanted to have. Uh, and from that perspective, understanding this is just a short time and we're in grad school now and and we're yes. going to go through these courses and then we're going to graduate and we're going to go back and, and have all these wonderful things to share with all the people that we love. We knew that. We had the perspective on that. So even a tragedy, even something which we knew was going to be, we were going to respond very negatively to, even that, we planned it knowing that it was going to be something we needed to learn and it would only be for a short time. It's like going to the dentist. And then once that's over, then we will have learned the lessons that we needed to learn. We will have been with the people we love. And we would have taken all that into our graduation and into the life after this life. Beautifully said. Mm -hmm. you know, I think that the best thing, if you, if you feel that you've been dealt a poor hand, understand that you did plan that. And you planned it because, as Craig points out, this is like 10 minutes because you're eternal, you are eternal, you never begin, you never will end. I say it every week, and it is true. It is extremely, inevitably, there's no way around it. It is the truth. So if you, if you, you feel that things are going badly, you know, lean in. Try to do the best you can with it, always with love. If you do that, then you are going to ace this lifetime. Maybe you'll never have to come back again, even if you do it really well. Whatever happens, it's either love being expressed to you or it's a call for love from you. That's the only kind of thing that ever happens in your life. So lean into that. Make the best of it. And I think you'll find that you will grow and triumph from these things that happen to you. But it is hard. I, I don't mean to say it's not. We all We all have these tough lives but how if someone says well i want to use my mind to make my life better how what would you recommend to that person craig well we can do that we can use our minds and that we were given these minds with our free will to be able to do that 95 percent of what we do in our daily lives is coming out of the subconscious that's the programming that we got in the first seven years of our lives and the result of that is that we're going based upon our programming not based upon who we want to be so we can take a look at that programming and we can say, I like this and I don't like that and I'm going to accept this and I'm not going to accept that. And so we can make of ourselves what we want to be. If we want to have a life that we envision, if we, we've made the decision, we want to change, we want to have the lives that we want to have, then we have to surround ourselves with what we want the world to be. If we want to be happy, we have to do happy things, remember happy thoughts and experiences, be with happy people, and enjoy the feeling of happiness. We have to stay on that level. It's what Abraham Hicks calls the vortex. And if we stay on that level, then what will come to us is what will be best for us. And so there will be, in the midst of being happy, then we will have sadness because it was important for us to have that sadness in the midst of being happy. But if whatever we decide we want to be, we have to have that deeply inside of us. We have to have the conviction. And we do that by orienting our lives towards whatever that is. We, we can change the program. We can become all that we want to be. This is another place where affirmations could be very helpful. Um, if you have a serious illness... Um, don't say, oh, God, please make me better, because then you're just affirming that you are sick. If you want actually not to be sick anymore, then thank God for the fact that you are not sick. Thank you for my health. 
thank you for thank you for the my new job. Thank you for the fact that um, uh, I won the lottery. Whatever. <laughs> Although I don't think I'd pray for that, but still, that's how to pray. Pray in gratitude affirmations because then you are affirming the gift, and the because there's no time in 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 reality and the, therefore there isn't any way to go back and and sort of pray and then have it happen now you've got to thank god for the gift now and affirm that you have it and when you believe as jesus said when you and as buddha said when you believe with all your heart and soul that you have the gift whatever that gift is you want it is yours that mountain is going to go throw itself in the sea, as Jesus said. That exactly, that is true. When you really get that, um, in fact, we're going to have a guest on, I think in a couple months, who um, is an expert on affirmations. And she's, she's basically remade her whole life with affirmations. And uh, I, I use them sparingly, but I use them too if something is important, if one of my children needs a little help or something that um, I, I just wish I could help a little bit with. I, I affirm the gift. And it does work. Um, I, I, I have stories I could tell, which I don't want to tell now because I don't want to take away from Craig. But it is amazing how well affirmations work. Um, so if, if there's something you really think is crummy about your life, you don't want, affirm that, you, that you're no longer sick. Remember this poor fellow who kept, kept believing and then not believing in his medication and it cured him and made him sick again. Oh my goodness, what a funny story. Actually, it's not funny at all. But it's a it's an amazing story that that it's actually could story. happen. Yeah, yeah. That's- and then uh, I don't know if you uh, your listeners know Anita Morjani yep. uh, who wrote the book Dying to Be Me. Uh, she had terminal lymphoma and it had metastasized throughout her body and her body functions were shutting down. She went into a coma and everybody expected it it would be any day now that it would be the end of her life. And she had a near-death experience. And during her experience, she learned that the stresses of her life were responsible for the cancer. She was bringing the cancer upon herself. She was stressed by difficulties. She had an Indian upbringing, but she lived in Hong Kong. And so when she awoke, she had complete understanding what had caused the cancer and that she had the power to heal herself. And so she took that power. And then within two weeks, 70% of her cancer completely disappeared. In wow. five weeks, all of the cancer had disappeared. So she was at death's door. And because she realized she had the power over that cancer, then she was able to make it disappear. With many, many, many stories like that of, of yes. people who have taken yes. control of an illness that they have and they completely reverse it. I, there, there actually, there are a lot of stories like that. I, maybe someone should just collect a whole bunch of them in a book because mm-hmm. people who are sick, not, you know, they know there's something wrong with their body, and being being told that they're healthy sometimes is really all they need, and 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 believing it, trusting the doctor, you're healthy, we'll do this, we'll do that, you're going to be all better. That can be very powerful if you believe it. The key is to believing. But belief from amounting to certainty can transform your life in any way that you are most trying to transform it. So, so how do you how do you feel about all of this? I mean, do you do you use it in your own life? Uh, yeah, um, if we the Abraham Hicks again, they talk about the vortex being in the vortex. And it's a good analogy. And what happens when you're in the vortex and you are orienting your life toward everything you want it to be, and you don't lose sight of that, whatever. But you have to decide what you want to be first, and that's what the, what most people don't do. That's they never right. Look at their lives and say, you know, I, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to blame other people for this. I'm not going to be a victim. I'm going to take control of my life, and this is what I want to be. And so then, if you have a clear picture of what it is that you want your life to be like, then you you can fashion your life into that. And you do that just by using being in the vortex, which means you're accepting whatever happens, you're moving towards whatever happens, you're putting things into your life to make that happen, and then eventually it will happen for you because you're revising, you're, you're changing your script, the script that you had when you were a child. We all had to abandon the scripts we had as children. So when we come to the point at which we are mature enough that we can change ourselves, we can become spiritually active, and we can become all that we want to be, we abandon the scripts and we remake ourselves into who we want to be. That will change our bodies, it will change our lives, it will change our relationships, and ultimately it changes humankind. 
All right, there are people listening who have young children or grandchildren, and they're saying, wait a minute, I, if we're giving them the wrong script, how do we know what the right script is? What would you say to people who, are, who have little children and they're trying to get them programmed right? Yeah, they, if they want to program the children right, what they need to do is to, to, to deprogram themselves. So they need to oh, start off by okay. looking at themselves and saying, what are the programs that I developed for my parents? And what is it that I want to be? Who do I want to be? What is the ideal person that I'd like to be? And, and once they start doing that and, and they start moving towards it, they start evolving themselves towards it, children will see that model. They'll see that, that mom and dad are, are, believe in themselves. They believe that they could become what they want to be. And when you share that with a child and the child develops their own independence, they believe they can be everything that they want to be. And so what we're doing is we are shaping those children to become independent, to self-confidence, and to realize that they can be loving and kind and compassionate and everything that we're hoping that humankind eventually will be, they can have in their little microcosm of their own lives. And so based upon that, because of who they're, what they're seeing in us, then they will become people who are much more mature than we are because they'll be taking it further from where we took it and they then are going to advance themselves based upon that really early programming that we're, we're giving them, which is wonderful, much more, much better than what people are getting now. Wow, beautifully, beautifully said. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're coming near the end of our time. What do you want people to take away from today, people who are listening, and, and you've given us a lot of information. What do you want people to take away? Yeah, the most important thing is to realize that we are eternal beings having a a physical experience. We're just in earth school. This is going to be here for a while. We did, we planned some things that were tragic and we planned some things that are wonderful and, and we're going to get through those. We're going to go out uh, to the other side and eventually we're going to transition. We're going to graduate out of earth school and we're going to get back together again with all the people that we love. And so what we can do now during this time is to be all we can be understand that what we want to have in life, we want to have happiness, we want to have love, we want to have compassion. That means we have to be happy and loving and compassion. And if we do that, then we will be changing our lives and we'll be changing the lives of all the people around us. And so we can use our eternal lives in this very brief moment in time to have an effect upon all the people around us, our children, and eventually all of humankind. Beautifully said. And and your your primary website is afterlifeinstitute.org, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Is there any other web, uh, website you want to share with us? Uh, we're going to be having earthschoolanswers.com. Earthschoolanswers.com is full of the videos. So it has the videos from all of the books. And they're available. Anybody can get on earthschoolanswers.com and they can look at the videos. Just go down, br- browse through them and and if they see a video they'd like to watch, then go ahead and watch it. Wow, great. <laughs> you, mm-hmm. You're you're always way ahead of us. Whatever we need, you already have done it, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Craig, thank you so much. I always love having you as a guest. You're, it's you, been uh, wonderful. Yes, it always is. Bless you, dear. And so um, I'll be in touch about what when your next book will be out, and we'll be sure to be able to have you on right away Good. to talk about Good. that. Thanks. Thanks. My dear friends, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. I'm so glad you were with us today. I always love it when Craig is here. Please never forget that you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began. You never will end. And when you really get what that means, it changes everything in your life for the better. Next week, our guests will be Dennis Grega and Michelle Zabo. Dennis is a research psychologist and a software developer by background, but his passion is studying the non-physical realities in life after death. His partner in this work is Michelle Zabo, who is a healer, creative director, writer, and teacher. And together, they founded AfterlifeData.com in 2009, AfterlifeLibrary.com in 2011, and VoicesAcrossTheVail.com in 2014. They build Voices Across the Veil as the world's largest ongoing study of the afterlife. And I just want to say one more thing about Dennis and, and uh, Michelle. They are being mentored very closely by our beautiful friend, Craig Hogan. So um, he, he's the one who told me about them. I love the work they're doing. And he, this is yet another thing that Craig is doing to try to advance all of humankind. So 
bully, bully for you, Craig. Everybody seems to be getting help from you. This is their third visit to Seek Reality, and I'm excited to learn what they're up to now because they always have a lot to say. So please join us next week and visit with two beautiful people who really are working hard to transform the world for the better. And of course, today we've been talking with our dear friend, Dr. R. Craig Hogan, about the amazing power of our minds and the use of affirmations to help us make the most of that power. My goodness, um, I, I think we learned a lot more from Craig about the power of our minds and how we need to be careful what we even think, uh, which to me is, is exciting. I mean, if you, if you can think things that are not good, you also can think things that are wonderful and beautiful and make that your life. And, This, believe it or not, this has been Craig's 29th Seek Reality appearance. Every time he has come to us, he has had something new to say. He is our dear, precious friend. He's the most amazing man. Craig Hogan is always patient. He's always loving. You can hear how he talks. And he's tireless in his efforts to help you understand what really is true. Nearly all the wonderful guests that we feature here each week are deep experts in some specific field, you know, death, the afterlife, the greater reality, consciousness, astral travel, spiritual development, something, you name it. But Craig Hogan is the only person I have ever met who has worked so intensively to understand how all of reality fits together and what it all means that he is an expert on just about everything. And again, now he's venturing far ahead of the rest of us. His two recent books are an updated and reissued Your Eternal Self, which is his classic about the physics of the greater reality. Now it's called, of course, Your Eternal Self. Science discovers the afterlife. Wouldn't that, would, would that that were true? His book that is most pertinent to our topic today is, is There is Nothing But Mind and Experiences. I loved that book when I first read it. I, I it, It blows your mind, but in a very good way. The world is ready at last to understand what Craig is able to share with us. The only way to really defeat the fear of death and unleash the powers of your mind is to finally get enough about what the greater reality is that you can be certain that you will never die. That's the key to unlocking the door to a wonderful, beautiful life on earth and eternally. And Craig Hogan is, frankly, the greatest teacher I've ever known of all these amazing truths. Next up will be his book of answers to our greatest questions provided by people who we used to think were dead. And I think we're really going to love this. That will be his next visit with us in a few months. As you know, my own nonfiction books are Liberating Jesus, My Thomas, The Fun of Dying, The Fun of Staying in Touch, The Fun of Growing Forever, The Fun of Living Together, and very soon, The Fun of Loving Jesus, Embracing the Christianity that Jesus Taught. For children, there's The Fun of Meeting Jesus. It's for early, early readers or pre-readers. And you can order all these books through bookstores or on Amazon.com. The adult books are also available as audiobooks. If you want to talk about my books, about this con- this conversation we've just had with Craig Hogan, about anything at all, you can always contact me through the green contact block on robertagrimes.com. I answer every email. Just please make sure I get your right address because I hate to write a nice email and then have it just bounce back. So ma- make sure I have your correct email address and then just ask your questions or make your comments. I'm happy to hear from you. Meanwhile... This has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Please enjoy. Please make the most of this coming week in our one reality, knowing that you are a powerful, eternal being, and you, most of all in the entire universe, you are infinitely loved. You've been listening to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Join us every week as we explore what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about the one reality we all share. Knowing the truth changes everything.